Let's begin with the market, though, as we wrap up yet another winning week. Healthcare staples and communication services leading the gains this week for the S&P while utilities and energy lagged. Joining us now is David Bonson of the Bonson Group. Good afternoon to you both. Um, I will start, David, with you uh, and the fact that we have seen this recent rally. Does it continue? Well, my view is always the same, that anybody trying to predict what will happen in the next day, week, or even month probably shouldn't be listened to. And since I want people to listen to me, I'll I'll avoid trying to speculate. It's a coin flip. The the idea of a Santa Claus rally of some big move up near the end of the year, that's exactly what has just happened. And to get forward momentum from here without another earnings season and without any particular fundamental news to drive it, I guess the bond yields could go lower, in which case you may get more multiple expansion. But people just have to understand that that's really what's driving the market right now is nothing more than the inverse of bond yields, just getting a little bit more boost in valuation to what's already a pretty expensive market. Mm, So stocks continue to take their cue from bonds. And of course, we know the Santa Claus rally actually covers the last five trading days of the year, the first two trading days of January. But overall, seasonally, this is historically a strong time for stocks. November to January, it's the year's best consecutive three month span, historically speaking. Barry, whether it's this year or perhaps more importantly, looking to 2024, where do we go from here? And, and I ask that knowing that you do believe that stocks are going to struggle early next year. Correct. At the expense of David now suggesting that people shouldn't listen to me. (laughs) David, it does raise the question, when does bad news actually become bad news for the market? And I listen, I asked that in a week where it's been really rough for crude oil. And yeah, energy stocks squeaked out again, uh, albeit barely this week. uh, But it raises concerns about the macroeconomic picture. That's right. When oil prices are very volatile around geopolitical issues, it's harder for macroeconomic concerns to factor in. But when they weaken because of eroding demand, that can be a leading indicator to something more macroeconomic. Um, I think that the earnings picture of the last couple quarters were very clear that earnings probably troughed uh, six, nine months ago, and the decline was about four or five percent. From the peak. That wasn't that bad. And right now, margins are very healthy. We're going to go into the first quarter looking at fourth quarter earnings, and I think it'll be more of the same. So ultimately, your point is a good one. Will bad news actually become bad? Because right now, people have liked any data point that indicates the Fed may be pausing or weakening. The main reason, by the way, for the Fed to begin cutting is because there's no reason to be this tight. Okay. They got way too tight for no reason. Inflation is at a two handle right now. If it weren't for the ridiculous shelter lag that everybody knows, the shelter is not up 8% year over year. Mm-hmm. And so real headline inflation is a two handle now. And I also want to remind people we're going into an election year. Uh, and that is a good reminder because we know there's some very specific patterns that tend to play out in election years. Gentlemen, thanks for kicking off the top of the hour with me. 